The empty parking spot and the black ribbon in front of Venus Photos and Records was where Belize's latest murder victim made his business home. This was where Charles Anderson stationed himself as a taxi driver for the past 30 odd years until his murder on Wednesday. The 52-year-old father of three was a familiar face to many who frequent the downtown area. Today his presence was visibly missing as two of his friends shared their recollection of him. Several years, me, Charles, Mr. Bennett, um, Mr. McGill and Mr. Jones. We generally, um, we, they were up on the corner, they run taxi cab now. We never know Mr. Charles has no problem person or have problem with people, others, wise, or just come do a job and, you know, we converse, normal conversation and Mr. Charles go about his business, you know, family man, 530 son, he done the home with the family and things, so it really surprised me know that something like that happened. We work together, sometimes he give me jobs, you know. Yeah, like that. Everybody help each other, you know, you know, yeah. especially business-wise, you know. Dave McKenzie said that he last saw Anderson alive less than an hour before residents of Guzman Crescent in the Belama Phase 1 area reported hearing the muffled gunshot that killed him. I passed my Orange Street Bridge. He was going on the canal side and I was coming Orange Street all the time and I just gave him way so that he could continue on. on, on that was going the on. morning after. That was in the afternoon, I guess that was on the same trip that he went and died, I guess. So he never, um, he, he's surprising if you know something like that happened. He had somebody in the vehicle? Yeah, but I never recognized who was in the vehicle. I, I see, you know, passengers, you never, you know, pay attention to see exactly who in the car, you know, but, you know, he never have a tin car, you can say true and true, but we never really see who in the car. The car was discovered parked here with Anderson's body shortly after five on Wednesday evening. This was three hours after the gunshot was heard sometime around two o'clock in the afternoon. No one came out to check what it was and it wasn't until another resident noticed that the taxi had been at the same location for hours with the engine still running that they realized that something was odd. The person who made the discovery told Love News that the car windows were rolled down and he observed that Anderson had suffered a single bullet wound to the back of the neck. That bullet exited the front of his neck. Police press officer Sergeant Fitzroy Yearwood says that the police are seeking two suspects who someone else saw leaving the area soon after the gunshot was heard. We know that when they exited his motor vehicle, they got into a SUV, golden color, that drove off around Guzman Crescent. So we are, we are looking for actually the driver of that vehicle that vehicle and the two men that were in his taxi. Well, he had his wallet in his pocket still and he had money in his pocket, so we do not believe that the motive was robbery. This fact lends an interesting twist to the story because Anderson had received death threats on Sunday after he had gone to the aid of his wife in an alleged attack against her over the weekend. On Sunday night, he was detained by police and later charged with wounding the other person. On Tuesday, he was taken to court where he pleaded not guilty to the charge. The next day, Wednesday, he was killed. His stepdaughter, Cheyenne Ireland, was bitter in her conversation with us. Imagine you're going to make one report. Imagine it, you're going to make one report for making a go no further. And you turn around be the bad one they lock you down. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and I go Tuesday after four, then let them go. I court. One night to sleep in a bed with the wife. And the next day disappear. You put your own one and one together. I'm not saying nobody that I, I I'm assuming that it's that person. No, I could have never said it pained me the most for my little brother. I'm telling you, it pains me and I feel I can't, can't do anything that comes after this. No justice is here. Don't wait on that. I'm crying because he had no one to help him where they took him and killed him. Because if I was there, they would have killed him. Both of us. Anderson's murder brings to five the number of taxi driver homicides for 2011. With his killing, his colleagues now go about their jobs with an air of precaution.
Africa, we watch who all go, with who. And then we try to memorize the, the face or something, you know. Something you have to do. Look out you for each other. Eat, look out for each other. That's like the, the chance the taxi man you know. You see? He said the fifth person, well, then for the eye, as you notice, right? Yes. So you're scared as a taxi man? We are all scared. Because, you see, it's the type of people they're trying to pick up. When you pick up, the high risk. You know? I don't know who is who these days. Taxi, that was. There was a job where you, you post at a certain location and if your people, you do anything outside and somebody want to hurt you, you're an easy target. So me personally, I try I try to keep a, a smooth relationship with people and try to stay out of problem as much. Anderson was planning to take a trip to the U.S. next week with his wife, Dawn, and their son. The family is now preparing to put him to rest. While police look for two suspects, they have also detained a woman from Mahogany Street Extension pending investigations into this latest murder. Marion Alley for Love News.